first new mummy movie, ironically, makes me feel dead inside. Hey, Bran, what's up? You look ridiculous. It's Nightmare Night. We're supposed to look ridiculous. First off, no, it's not. Second, how did you get in here? Well, the guards on post recognized me as a sniper, so they let me in. No questions asked. First off, those idiots are overdue for some remedial education. Second, we don't have snipers. You literally threatened me with an M16. Twice. The M16 A2 service rifle is a lightweight, air-cooled, gas-operated, magazine-fed shoulder weapon. It fires a 5.56 millimeter ball projectile, muzzle velocity 2,800 feet per second. This is my rifle. Repeat after me. First off, not a sniper rifle. Second, I brought that with me. From the human world. Uh, don't you need a permit for that? Equestria doesn't have guns. Ergo, no gun laws. Why would I need a permit? That's... fair, I guess. Anywho, you said Halloween, so I guess we're doing that. Uh, actually, it's Nightmare Night. Halloween special it is. Joining me to review this episode is Voice of Reason for Scaremaster. Oh, okay, just ignore me then. So, this episode opens up with Fluttershy having nervous breakdown number Googleplex. Oh goody, one of these episodes. Quotation mark, these quotation mark? You know, episodes where characters either forget lessons or seem to forget past experiences, effectively hitting the reset button back to the first entry of the series, metaphorically speaking. I mean, it's not bad now, as you could make the argument she might just have a simple phobia, but trust me, it gets worse later on. Okay, Killjoy. We cut to Fluttershy in the middle of Halloween Town Square. <laughs> and I swear, the music sounds like the next Halloween Town Overworld from Kingdom Hearts 3. If it ever comes out! Fluttershy? What are you doing out and about? It's Nightmare Night, remember? How can I forget? I think that's the politest way anyone could say no sh- Yay. Oh, right, one of your channels. I think it's interesting that everyone knows that Fluttershy is not keen on Nightmare Night and can be scared easily. And yet in the very next scene, she seems to forget it. Like a lot of characters from episode to episode. <coughs> Ooh, potato chip. We continue on to Twilight's scary castle, both in universe and meta. Jokes aside, the atmosphere in this episode is fantastic. Just how empty and dark the hallways are. The lighting is exceptional and the music is fittingly ambient. Spike appears and makes the case that, hey, you're already out here, why not go all the way? Hi, everypony. Ah! It's not what it looks like. What are you doing here? Is everything okay? Everything is fine. In fact, it's more than fine. I've decided to join you in your Nightmare Night festivities. Huh. Normally they'd make an entire episode about her being too afraid to try, but... Right at the beginning, she's attempting to come out of her shell and actually give it a shot. I don't think season one Fluttershy would have done that, as she says. But it's just like when I was afraid to sing in front of any pony. If I hadn't given it a try, I never would have found out how much I enjoy it. And we'd have missed out on how great you sound. Fluttershy with us on Nightmare Night? Why, that's positively the most wonderful news I've heard in ages. Don't forget the best part, going through my family's corn maze. <laughs> Oh, right. The maze. Uh, only if you're up for it. I like how our friends are behaving here. They know Fluttershy is giving it the old college try and that this is new uncomfortable territory for her. They're being as encouraging as possible, but also perfectly supportive if she doesn't go all the way. Good friends. <laughs> Grounded. Actually, there's a funny bit of history here that we may have forgotten. This episode was accidentally released on iTunes one month early, before Crusaders of the Lost Mark. This episode actually was supposed to come after that, so they very well could have blown the surprise about the CMC's cutie marks. But, because the CMC are all in costume, we couldn't see their marks. So yeah, bullet dodged. Mummy? No. Hi, this pony. No. Uh, definitely not. Wow, foreshadowing and continuity in one fell swoop. It must be my birthday. So Rarity continues looking through costumes and thinks Fluttershy should embrace her destiny of being a Disney princess. I thought she was Snow White, not Cinderella. They're both druids, close enough. What, no good? 
What if we encounter something terrifying and need to get away quickly? All those layers could slow me down, or worse, make me trip! And here we get to my problem with the episode. I understand Fluttershy is timid and can scare easily, especially in a situation she's not used to. But I'm fairly sure there's a difference between scared and stupidity! Fluttershy, ask Rarity to trim the hem so you don't trip! Metal Gear! You're mad at Fluttershy? I'm mad at Rarity! I mean, back in Season 2! Doesn't seem all that aerodynamic. Hmm, I'll see what I can do. So there are options, but we just gotta have poor Flux's paranoia be enabled by surprising incompetence. She's a seamstress! It's her Celestia darn job to fix these problems! Oh no, Fluttershy is being stupider here. Like with the mask! What about being able to see what's to the left or right of me? Turn. Your. Head. Ah! Oh no 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 no. Rarity's being dumber here. Okay, does Rarity really have such a lack of imagination that when Fluttershy just wants the simple dress, she can't think of any ways to accent it? She could go as Morticia or whatever the pony equivalent to that is. I'm sure it exists. Hey Fluttershy. Where's your costume? I'm going to a masquerade ball. Without the mask. My fucking name is in it. Oh, that's great. Isn't it great? Oh, oh great. Yeah. Oh yeah, I just noticed. Applejack has now gone as the Scarecrow and now the Lion. If she goes as the Tin Man next year, she gets a free Sunday. So they play Pin the Horn on the emo, and Rainbow Dash actually puts her Wonderbolt training to good use. Jeez, the amount of continuity in this episode is staggering. I love it. But then... Uh, okay, I can understand phobias. I can understand paranoia. But this... This is not those. This is stupidity. Well, um... It's just that if I'm blindfolded and somebody were to leap out in front of me, I'd never have the chance to defend myself. What happens if, when my head is deep down in the water, some kind of scary monster appears? How would I even hear to know I was under attack? What if when I'm eating one of these chewy taffies, my mouth becomes glued shut and I can't scream for help? Okay, that is another thing I don't understand. Pinky literally just said... Each bag has been made with each of you in mind, complete with each of your favorite candies. How could Pinky make that kind of mistake? It's like an idiot bull hot potato, and Fluttershy is losing! So far, that's Fluttershy 5, Rarity 2, and Pinkie Pie 1. You owe me 50 bits by the end of this. Curse you, DHX! There's just so many things that terrify me about tonight. There's things that terrify you are equally valid concerns in a day of not tonight. Then Twilight gives the idea that Fluttershy should try doing the scaring. Her? Scaring us? <laughs> oh, you're being serious. Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> so yeah, this precious little cinnamon roll is gonna try and scare everyone. Come on, my cornflakes are more terrifying. Really? Well, yeah, they... Ah, crap, they got out again. Be right back. We see Fluttershy has no idea how to terrify her friends for a scary but fun experience. Not even Utena, Ray, Bulma, Ranma, and Sailor Moon as uninvited guests can come to her rescue. I mean, she has good starts, but she doesn't know how to capitalize on those situations. Like, all of a sudden, the guests are actually parasites. That'd freak me out. Someone's been spending too much time around glowing rocks, am I right? <laughs> 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 oh my god! Oh my god. Would everybody just relax for a second? That is an alien parasite. But they're not scared because they can clearly pay attention to the pony behind the couch, and... Okay, this sentence is just blackmail. You showed up to a party and every pony was extremely disappointed in you. Can you imagine anything more upsetting? That's not fair! Fluttershy's not playing fair! The most important meal of the day tastes so much better when you have to kill it. Anywho, Fluttershy then gives up and tells her friends to have fun without her. Angel Bunny, being the sweet and sour gremlin that he is, gives Fluttershy the idea to go even further. You think I'm gonna keep going after that? <sighs> Can't do that. So they go into the corn maze and... Memes! 
Laura! It's a good thing Fluttershy isn't here, because she would never be able to handle this. Wow. D Yay! Looks like a bunch of dried sticks painted white to me. Hey, try to keep up the illusion, would ya? What every wrestling fan wants to say to the phrase, you know it's fake, right? That's a good point. A lot of times the people around you can help contribute to the overall mood. I remember this one time when I was going in the Disney's Haunted Mansion ride, there were people trying to be smart, cool, or sarcastic, and totally wrecked the mood and therefore the enjoyment of everyone around them. Moral of the story? Don't be a f killjoy. So, the events in the maze begin to go further and further. Even though we all know it's obviously fate, we sit here like, DANG! That was really well timed and coordinated! Good showmanship! Are you talking about this episode, or wrestling again? Yes. Also, Angel may or may not have seen Psycho. <laughs> ah! It's a Balor! Nah, he's in the basement. After Fluttershy decapitates Spike's second head, she apologizes for scaring them too much. But everyone's totally cool with it. In fact, they rather enjoyed it. Fluttershy still declines being a part of Nightmare Night because it's just not her thing. And that's a good message. Just because you have friends with similar interests doesn't mean you have to do everything together. Yeah, I still have some issues with this moral. This might just be my extrovertedness talking, but I gotta say my piece. In real life, sometimes you're going to do activities that you don't want to do. There at least needs to be an attempt to socialize, and here, I'm glad that Fluttershy did make the attempt. However, it kind of feels like this episode is saying you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. I don't like using this phrase, but sometimes you gotta suck it up. Now, I'm not saying to strong-arm someone to partake in something they don't like and or doing it frequently, but you gotta at least understand it's not just about you. Hmm, I see your point. As an introvert, I have to admit it's really difficult for me to come out of my shell and do things I'm not familiar with. It's uncomfortable, but I still gotta do it because it shows respect. It shows people that I care about them. So, it seems like there's gotta be a balance. Sometimes you need to venture outside your circle of comfort for the sake of others. Sometimes, it's okay to just not participate. Now this is what I call a perfect nightmare night. So that was Scare Master. It had its ups and its downs. The ups being the atmosphere, animation, continuity, and music. The downs being Fluttershy's stupidity and questionable approach to the moral in a real life story. Eh, uh, shipped. The Balor got out. A real funny brand that's... Ah! Run for the hills! Huh. What's his beef? I think he takes our D&D &D games too seriously. Alright, Fluffy. Time for walkies. 